Joining us now is the seven foot one center for the Perth Wildcats, Alex Saar. Thank you so much for stopping by NBA Today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, you're here for a very special reason with really special news. So I'm just going to give you the floor. Yeah, so first of all, you know, like uh, with all the work I put in since I was a, a kid starting basketball, and, uh, and, you know, like all the coaches, great coaches I have, and all of my, my family that's around me uh, every day, my brother, my, my parents, you know, uh, I, I think uh, it, it's really important into what, what made me like the person I am today and, and the basketball player I am today. And uh, with that being said, uh, I just make it official that I'm declaring for the 2024 NBA draft. So when he was 11 uh, in Toulouse, I had the opportunity to work with this athlete, with this athlete uh, when he was so young and try to go to the top level. Now it's quite uh, 10 years we work uh, uh, around is the opportunity for him to increase his athletic abilities. We were in conversation with Alex and his representatives for quite a while before he eventually signed with the league. We got a sense that he was a guy that A, was a genuine NBA prospect and B, would be really effective within an NBL team. So uh, in conversation with Alex and his representatives, we originally were talking about what it might look like to come in for the 2022-23 season. That timeline pushed back, we maintained conversation and then um, it became an, e an easy conversation heading into NBL 24. And then it was about finding the right team for Alex to play for. And once they had a conversation with the Perth Wildcats, it was an easy decision from there. We learned about Alex's interest in the NBL program uh, probably about six to eight months before we actually agreed to terms with him. Um, we did a lot of background, we had a lot of mutual connections through uh, France, uh, through his time at Overtime Elite, and just through, and through his agency as well. And learning more about his background, uh, learning more about his why, why he wanted to come to the NBL as his kind of his pathway after Overtime Elite to, to try and get to the draft. We started to really find a, find a young man that was motivated uh, to come into a program like this uh, get professional experience, be open to whatever role was was going to be offered to him. And then when we did get him on a, on a Zoom call and, and get to speak with him and his parents and his brother, it was pretty clear that, you know, this was a guy that uh, really wanted to take an opportunity like this with a club like ours. Um, and yeah, it just became quite a, quite a seamless conversation and then quickly became um, an, an agreement. I really didn't know too much about him, uh, but obviously his path in Europe uh, where he's from France, but then he tra uh, transferred to Barcelona, which is a, a very big club in Europe, and then uh, going to OTE in the US. But the thing that I was really curious to find out more is his brother had had a pathway through the US college system and then had started on his pro career. So genetics, uh, when, when you talk about sport and what I gravitate to, I'll always look at genetics first. And then, you know, as I watch film, uh, you know, obviously his attributes uh, you know, become something that really intrigued me in adding him to the roster. We heard good things about the league, first of all, and we heard good things about uh, Perth Wildcats. Uh, we had a meeting with the commissioner of the league in the summer league in Las Vegas, when we had to make a decision about uh, Alex's future. And uh, with all the information we collect, we thought this was the right move to come over here. Yeah, I mean, for me, choosing first white guys was like a no-brainer. Uh, when I talked with Danny, when I talked with John Riley, like, I just really liked the, the way they presented the club to me, uh, their way of seeing things. They, they really, they have a plan for me, and I can see myself playing for the Perth Wildcats and being impactful on the court. I've 
been very happy with his progress uh, now the game, so we get to see how that translates from the practice court to the uh, on court. Um, but there's he's made great strides already in the first month. I think we kind of knew probably after the second game in Vegas that like wow this kid's got a chance to probably propel himself up the draft boards and all of the talk post Vegas was like this guy could be the number one pick in the draft. To see Alex play at such a high level on such a big stage with so many NBA talent evaluators watching, man it was very exciting and then for the Wildcats to come out in the second of those games against Ignite get the win, Bryce Cotton goes off, and Alex doubles down with another really impressive performance. It was those games that vaulted him into the conversation to be the number one overall pick. Jonathan, who is moving up your 2024 draft board already? Malika, the story of these two Ignite Perth games has to be Alex Sarr. Every time the film comes on, I'm just like, this dude is massive. He is long. But he moves so well, Sam. He moves extremely well. This is like the fourth or fifth episode where I've talked about Alexander Saar, but Alexander Saar has been probably the biggest winner of this early, early preseason exhibition game cycle. He was such an eye opener with the way that he performed in both games, the energy that he brought on both ends of the floor. Um, just overall, like, uh, what would like to see a part of that young town? That was on four. A lot of guys you'll probably see in New York in about 10 months. Yeah, it was good uh, seeing all these prospects, but I was more focusing on just my team getting better and playing against other prospects. That was more in my mindset. What I would say is it didn't matter who was in the gym or who wasn't in the gym because we had a lot of NBA people come through this year. His demeanor and his approach did not change. Uh, and I've been around, as you said, those 18-year-olds that when there's an NBA presence in the gym, their behavior changes from what you see day to day. But with Alex, he did not change uh, irrespective of who walked in our gym on the day. And isn't this man been exciting? The next star, the Frenchman, Alex Sarr. He's vaulted up the draft boards, Pete. Orford. A big crowd in, in Perth. And they are ready to rip into this Wildcat season. There is so much ahead of both of these two teams. Two of the leading contenders in NBL 24 get their campaigns underway. A couple of subs here, and we get to see Alex Sarr for the first time. And the Wildcats crowd likes that. Early doors. Hello. Oh, inside. Upstairs to Saar. For Alex Saar. Looking over the super coach team. Thank you. There's another one down. It's an early run. They've got fouls to give. They should use one. Boyle oh. tried to take it right at Saar. Got it sent back the other way. Here we go. Two to Dan. Here we go. 12 cats in the open court. You know the rest. Just find that man, and something good will happen. The Wildcats open their season in style. 101 to 95 winners. And their streak of not having lost a home opener since 2014 rolls on. It's been a happy hunting ground for Perth here at ROC Arena. Teams to target Alex Sarr, and how do you expect him to, I guess, deal with that target? I suppose. I think what's impressed me most about Alex is his maturity. Um, you know, he's he's 18 years old, but he's come in and um, he'll listen. Um, you know, when spoken to, he's, he's willing to learn. Um, so I'm sure he'll have a target on his back. Uh, but so far, I think he's handled it really well. Because the Adelaide 36, as you just said, hole and two right now, they're hungry. Underway in the jungle, and the chance for Perth to open scoring here. The thing that really is etched in my mind is our first game versus Adelaide uh, where he made back-to-back -back threes to really open up the game. Now he, he, he did his job 
in the fact that he stepped up and made the shots in a big moment, but uh, it was Bryce Cotton that made those passes to Alex. So when you got the MVP of the league trusting an 18-year-old kid in a big moment of the game, that's, as a coach, that's when you know something good is happening when the best player trusts that guy. Cotton goes back to him again, the teenager, what's another three! What a play, back-to-back -back triples, and Alex Sarsen, how do you like that? Bryce Cotton just gave him two open threes, unselfish play. Yeah, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, it's a pick and pop situation, so it's like just any other shot you would take in a game, and, uh, and it was just meaningful for me to take it, and, uh, and yeah, it was two great shots, I think, that, that kind of gave us a little, a little air in the, in the fourth quarter. You clearly enjoyed it, turning the crowd. Uh, what, was, what was the experience of doing that play? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, it's 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 cool. Like playing for the Red Army. You know, the the fans really get into it, and and I was just enjoying the moment. And the one on quarter time becomes really important as well. With point six on the clock. Like, was that the play that he drew up, or were you guys working it out at the time because they denied you? Yeah, a little credit, Craig. Come on. <laughs>
when he finally got back onto the court mentally that he was ready to, 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 to get back into action. And I think we saw that. I think his first game back was one of his best, most productive games. So for us, uh, and I think credit to Alex um, for him to work through that period and, and, and get himself back and then finish the season the way he wanted to um, was was fantastic to see because it clearly, in, in other circumstances that have happened with top prospects, they don't always come back. That was exactly why he came down here to finish a season and compete for a championship, and he lived up to all of that. Yeah, I think his athleticism has always been there. He's like 12 years old, so, you know, when you get a cut when you're young, it heals in like a day. When you get older, it like scabs up and gets longer. So, yeah, you know, I think we just being, he's full health now, 110%. He might even be stronger, you know what I'm saying? The sky's the limit for him, and I'm happy that, you know, he gets to stay here and finish out this run with us. Oh, Alex Saar got up and denied Cody Statman. Oh, Alex Saar! Oh, magnifique, Billy! Magnifique! Going up and down the floor and the ability to finish it around the rim. And there he is again! He is Just everywhere. Protecting the rim. Showing that he's back to full health. Top number 103. Saar gets it to go. He's fouled upstairs. Saar, cheesy does some special things, doesn't he? Do you enjoy watching him? Man, that's a special boy, man. I feel like a proud father every time I see that boy play. And um, Alex uh, was pretty dynamic um, on Sunday, 18 points in 18 minutes. Um, what was it like having him back to kind of, you know, like getting a big weapon back? Yeah, it's, it's been great to have him back. Obviously, we wanted to make sure he was back at full strength. But as you guys can see, he hit the ground running and it hasn't looked like he's missed a beat. So uh, all of us are happy with that. And uh, I'm sure he is, too. So what I, uh, we've certainly seen great growth from Alex throughout the season. I would say his, his intensity to compete in this playoff series was a little different to what we saw in the regular season. So when people ask about his competitive nature, I think this playoff series really shows how he's growing and he's going in the right direction as far as that can, is concerned. What happens for him in June? I don't know, but he's had great improvement for us, and he's a terrific kid. He, 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 like, we got spoiled with the next star. One of the cool moments for me during the season was chatting with a, an NBA scout who had spent a week in Perth and watching the Wildcats train, specifically to keep an eye on Alex. And he said he'd never seen a team, a professional team, support a young player like that Wildcats group was supporting Alex. All my teammates, you know, like everybody on the team, you know, just spending time with them, whether it's uh, away games, like being on the road with the teammates, uh, cracking jokes a little bit, and just spending time with them, that's probably why I'll miss the most. How do the roads in France compare to Australia? It's on the other side. Like, the, the road is like, 
we, we, drive, we drive on the right side. Do you think you should indicate, just in case these cars behind us? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> Oh my god! We just drive on Don't the Don't be scared, buddy. It's alright. Yeah, he's not he's actually not too bad. Um he's still learning, so it's it's just like anything, he's still learning how to indicate out of roundabouts and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm probably not the best teacher anyway, so I don't know who signed me up for that job, but. He said sometimes you'll see one or two of the older players kind of get around the younger prospect and, and help them along the way. And he said, but over the course of that week, I feel like I saw every single Wildcat help Alex in some kind of way, have really good rapport with him, uh, be a great teammate and support for Alex as he was going through a practice and preparation for games. So whilst Alex did all you know, his own work and he's a tremendous prospect in his own right, I think the organisation deserves a lot of credit for the way, top to bottom, they supported Alex through his time as a next star. He's great, you know, I was around great great vets that, that spent a couple of time of in the NBL, so they, they played way more NBL games than I'll ever play probably, and, uh, and just like listening to them at practice, whether it's little advice, whether it's during the game, you know, it's just, it's just great and he, and he helped me a lot uh, during the season. proud of him and, uh, and the way he, he managed everything because he, it was a new change for him and, and he, he fit very well with the team and his teammates were, were great too. We haven't, we haven't spoken about them but they were great and they really will welcome him in a, in a, in a good way and it was his first uh, professional experience. Yeah, and he enjoyed all the season long to be with the staff and his teammates and he have good friends now. They are all brothers and it's an uh, amazing path. And like Murray said, it was his first year pro really and he do well and we are so proud and we are lucky to, to choose the Wildcats. <laughs> Definitely it's been the right move because the organization is treating him extremely well because the physicality of the league is helping him to, to develop uh, as a player. Uh, so definitely it's, it's been a great move. We are 100% uh, sure that was what we had to do. And Alex is enjoying big time, you know, uh, his time over here. Yeah, I think it went by really fast, you know, and uh, I had a great time here. Uh, it was a great season with a, a lot of learning moments. Of course, it didn't end like, uh, like we all wanted to, but uh, uh, for me, you know, it's been really what I, what I expected it to be. And uh, if I had to do the choice again, I'll, I'll, I'll pick that, no question. He conducted himself very well. Like, you, you wouldn't have realized that he's a lottery pick. On the flip side, he had teammates that embraced it and utilize what was going on in a embracing and nurturing way, which I really think helped him through it all and made him feel welcome. So everyone played their role and I think it's something where he'll be able to reflect on years and go, that was a very good experience to be around professionals that actually cared about my interests as well as their own. I would say a lot of it probably you give credit to where he came from, Overtime Elite, like that program obviously is, is generated on a lot of media hype and I think he'd done that for the last two years being there in that environment and so coming here, although we had a lot of scouts travelling a long way just to see him, I don't think it phased him at all. He's, he'd been around an environment similar to that with a lot of prospects that had already gone in the lottery in terms of the NBA draft the year before. 
And I think for someone like him, he just took it in stride uh, and credit to him. It, it, it never it looked like it never phased him. He never talked about it. It was just something that was inevitable him coming down here. There was going to be attention. But as the attention grew, um, as he kept climbing up draft boards, like credit to him that he kind of stuck, stuck to it. He stayed focused on the task at hand. And I think as you listen to him when he spoke at any time in the media, it was all about the team. Every people was uh, wonderful with us, very, very kind. They take care of us in, in the best way we could imagine. So, no, wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we have to thank uh, all the staff, Jenny, the fans. The atmosphere here was wonderful. And if we have to, to do that again, we are okay to commit another year. <laughs> <laughs> the Wildcats try to win a championship every, every year, so uh, every time we don't win one, it's of course uh, you know, a disappointment. That's my first year playing pro, but uh, you know, it, it would have been special for sure, but uh, I think you, you still got to remember that we still did something special this year. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, for me, of course, I was disappointed, but then, yeah, I got a lot of work to do this summer and, uh, and uh, leading into the draft. Whichever team drafts him is, is going to be able to mold him just because he's still so young and coachable and he's just got so much more growth in him and as he fills out and gets stronger. So um, it's really up to him. Like, he's got all the physical tools that you, you would want in a, in, a, in, a, in a player at his position in the NBA, and then it's really up to him and the, and the situation he goes to take advantage of that. Is there anyone that your game reminds or you've watched that you remind of that game? Yeah, I mean, you know, Giannis, when he when he came in the league, I was young and uh, I was watching all, all his highlights and trying to pick things from his game. Uh, so, yeah, I was definitely looking a lot at him when I was younger. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast Peep. We got potential top three pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the French phenomenon. Alex Saar. <laughs> <laughs>